Hello, Mixnet Cases. This is Nuke Joss, and we've got a Halloween episode for you today. With me is the person whose fault this is. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm Tech, and I guess it's my fault again. Wow, just like work all over again. <laughs> And Tech, what are we talking about today? Today we are going to talk about Halloween. Uh, it's a great time of the year. It's always been uh, fun for me. I've always had fun with it my, my whole life, even when I was back as a little techie. So this is a time of year I always look forward to. And I want to talk about it with my friends. And I want to talk about Halloween and w- what it was like when we were little. What's it like now? And uh, just go on like that. I don't want to... Um, We'll get into that because we yeah. still have to introduce our friends. Do so we? Do us, we really, though? Yes, we do. Oh, because fine. while you may have guessed it, as often we have with us a good friend from Virginia who's muted. I haven't, listen, I haven't done this in a while. Hi, I'm Jason. And another friend not that far off, uh, still in the Northeast. Who's Is frozen. that me? Yes, Is that me? Go. Oh, you. yeah. Yeah, I guess because, yeah, I'm not. Yeah. Ah, oh, hi. Yeah, it's crazy, Joe. And Crazy Joe needs a geography lesson, but other than that. <laughs> yeah. And all the way down, down, down south. Hey, this is Miss Melissa, the bathtub mermaid. Who's been hanging out with the gators? <laughs> or trying Did you see the to- video I just sent on Facebook? There's a baby gator at lunch the other day. <laughs> There's always Ooh. gators at lunch. <laughs> Swamp puppies. So yeah, so we're going to be talking about Halloween. And uh, Jason actually sent a message earlier. He says, I don't have that much experience with Halloween. I'm going to tell you, um, everybody has some experience. There is no right or wrong way to do Halloween, um, including the fact that my family, we were not allowed to trick or treat. So I'm going to get that out of the way right now. We were not allowed to go trick or treating. I think I went trick or treating all of two times in my life as a child. And now my mom is like the best with what? trick-or-treating and hosts the annual trick-or-treating and all of the grandkids go to her house and walk around her neighborhood. And now instead of handing out raisins and pennies, she gives out the full-size bars. So the ire I received growing up but for being the raisins and pennies house. Could, there yeah. could be worse. There's always the toothbrush and mini toothpaste house. No, my mom's not a dentist. Oh. <laughs> um, but, you know, you talk about not being allowed to trick or treat. The last house that we were in, our across the street neighbors had two young homeschooled kids. And uh, they were not allowed to trick or treat nor leave the house, but they were allowed to come across the street to show us their costumes. And they showed up instead of having like a bag or a pillowcase because they were only going to one house. They showed up with like the smallest, tiniest little plastic Tupperware containers. Like what you put your salad dressing in. Yeah, to just ask for like a piece of candy. Yeah, but we're the we're the full size bars and cans of pop house. So like teach the kids, grab the front of your costumes hold it up like a little pouch and then we just dumped we're not allowed to have this much candy it's halloween it's what you were given go back home. <laughs> go back home Wad- them waddling across the street like a big pouch full of full-size bars god it was funny oh my god that was so much fun it lets- the, one- the one time a year i'm allowed to be the corrupter <laughs> yeah it lets it lets everyone experience that uncle energy <laughs> Well, with the martial arts program that we were running, we told all the kids in our program that, well, when you come around the neighborhood and you come to trick or treat, if you can pull off a certain wrist lock technique on me at my door, I will pay off with double candy. So the kids are coming to the door and they're all hitting me with this wrist lock and I'm paying out double candy and their friends that aren't in the program are like, well, that's not fair. How come he gets two chocolate bars? It's like, well, if you came to class and you learned how to do this wrist lock, I'd give you double bars too. Seems fair. I thought it was fair. Seems fair. So, um... What was Halloween? So nutty. So you weren't allowed to trick or treat, no. and you were the house that gave out like like pennies and raisins. But what was Halloween like as a kid? Uh so for us, because my parents didn't have like a religious objection to trick or treating or Halloween. My parents really got into Halloween. Um, they just well, one my mom always had. She was that mom that I want everyone to have a healthy snack, which was so hypocritical because we would throw. Oktoberfest parties, which were Oktoberfest slash Halloween parties, where we would build our own pinatas and everybody coming over would bring a bag of actual candy. So we actually ended up, because I come from a large family, we ended up having two pinatas usually. There was the big kids pinatas and the little kids pinatas so that everybody got a chance to get a whack at it. 
And the way we built our pinatas, we didn't do that whole balloon thing. No, we got a box somewhere, like a mm. wine box or this will tell you more about my family than you need. <laughs> um, or like a, bo- a TV box or something, um, you know, for the old, like smaller size TVs. And we would tape it up and cut a hole in the top so that people could dump into it, put a loop in it. And then we would just draw like Frank, you know, Frankenstein's monster, or witches, cats, all sorts. And we would spend all week decorating this thing. For, for some reason, in the movie that plays in my mind, your mother is played by Catherine O'Hara. That's a good, that's, that's and, good, pretty good. And I can, I can just see her with like a wine glass going, I just want everyone to have a healthy snack. Slurp. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. So anyway, so we twist up this, uh, this, this, uh, uh, pinata and we'd all take a whack at it with a aluminum bat. <laughs> And blindfold. And uh, meanwhile, like there was usually, you know, brats on the go and a bunch of adults were there having an adult part. Like it was basically all of the f- family friends would come together and it'd be like the weekend before Halloween. And then, yeah, so that was our that was our thing, because my parents objection to trick or treating was they didn't want us to get hit by cars. <laughs> they were paranoid of us getting hit by cars. Um they started a whole nursery school to avoid us going on buses for one more year. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was an interesting, interesting childhood. How about you, Jason? What was Halloween like as a kid? I was just going to say, I feel like we have friend of the show, Stephen Tramontana to thank for, um, <laughs> Nutty's aluminum baseball bat to pinata stories. But they weren't the donkeys, you know, it was. They're still his people, Daddy. Yeah. They're still his people. <laughs> if I go to a party city now, I hear them talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, man, Um, for me, Halloween was really like your stereotypical Halloween when I was like younger. Like I got to, you know, buy my little costumes and like go out. But like when you live with older black parents, like they get tired so they're just like hey do you want to go out or do you just want us to get you candy and as an enterprising uh young man i was like just give me the candy i i can i can sit in front of this sega genesis and eat a bag of candy and be quite happy and he wonders why he has to go for long walks every day Hey, 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 listen. No, no, listen. no, no shame, no shame. You know, sometimes, listen, it's, listen, you gotta, it, you're thinking about it. What's more effective? Being driven around and having to go What's house this to house? Driven around things. <laughs> listen, I, listen, we, well, listen, Nancy's not letting us walk. She would, she would technically, when it was me and my cousins, like the few times that my cousins would go, we would like go to a neighborhood and like park and then we'd walk through the neighborhood and come back to the car. Cause like, you had to go to all go the to like the good neighborhoods. Yeah, yeah you got to go to true. the good neighborhoods. My mom's neighborhood is that good neighborhood, by the way. Now, and um, the the grandkids all come from who don't live in that neighborhood come to grandma's neighborhood. They'll trick or treat to their friends' houses, and then they'll come over to our place because they know that that's where the good candy is. Yeah, our, like, our neighborhood in Texas was the good neighborhood. Our neighborhood here is less so, but there is a person who actually gives out hot dogs. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're, they're cooked. It's okay. Not, I assume, but like, I mean, I'm not like, complaining, but I mean, I mean, to be fair, you got to keep your energy up on the, on the long walks. Just, for raw, candy, hot, just, just raw hot dogs, <laughs> just dropping them into your candy bag. You, right? you got to do a nice, just, a, it's just an eight pack of ballparks. Like, you know what would be a great, like, do that Canadian, this year. yeah, right. Well, you know what it is, right? You know, when, when you buy like the buns and they come in a bag of six, and you buy the the hot dog. The extras. The this is all the extras, right? Just, just flinging them in the bag. I, I was just thinking a great Canadian Halloween treat would be pepperettes, which are basically they look like hot dogs, but they're a little bit skinnier, and they're somewhere they're not quite a slim jim, but they're they're dried um like sausage treats and they're ah, pepperettes, spicy and they're yummy, and that would be a great uh, trick or treat. Imagine just dropping pepperettes in somebody's. Bag. Speaking of Canadian traditions, there's a friend of mine that was very fond of talking about you know making you know caramel apples, oh. but you make one caramel onion and you let the kids grab them and then you just wait for the one kid to bite into the caramel covered onion. <laughs> oh yeah, I love it. How about you, Melissa? What was uh, what was Halloween like as a kid for you? You know, I experienced radically different Halloweens depending on where we were living. So I experienced them in New Jersey and Colorado and California. 
Um, I'm not going to talk about New Jersey because I was really young, so I don't really have a lot of memories of that. Colorado, it was always, will we or will we not have to put a costume, a coat on over our costume and will it snow? Yep. Um, yep. But we lived in a mountain town in Colorado for a while when I was like seven or eight, Georgetown. And it was like the quintessential Hallmark, Hallmark town. John Denver used to film specials there. It was, it was like professionally cute. And that was probably the best Halloween I ever had because yes, we were trick or treating on ice, but you know, that's a skill. <laughs> and, um, there are two really cool things, three really cool things that happened. We had two historic homes and for Halloween, they would decorate in period, period decor. So we would be like walking into Victorian mining town decor and they had their docents dressed up and lead us through the house, like the lower parts of the houses and everything would be decorated. And then you get candy at the end. The second part was the school music teacher would wait until the there are like five or six kids piled up at her door. And then she would play the piano and make you parade through her house showing off your costume before she would give you candy. And then at the end of the night, the entire town would meet at the firehouse because they put on a party for the entire town. Oh, that's cool. That's like it was really cool. It was one of those. I mean, it was like Hallmark Christmas, I was gonna except say, it was like, Halloween. You lived in the Hallmark town. So you had a Hallmark. Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. Oh, we had Hallmark Christmases too, but that's another podcast. <laughs> I want to know if uh, the John Denver specials you mentioned were the ones with the Muppets. I love that. No, no, there were wow. two. There was one that was just, a, it was just a Christmas special. And then there's a movie that's called The Town that, that believed in Santa Claus or something like that from the early 70s where John Denver is a single dad and he's in this mountain town and he's a developer, but he ends up getting caught up in the, oh yes, everyone writes a letter to Santa thing and they filmed it in our town and we all got to be extras. You just got to look out for that icy patch at the front door, right, Joe? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. How about you, Joe? Uh, well, Halloween, uh, let me tell you, I went to Catholic school and, uh, the Catholic school kids today are, are getting gypped. Let me just tell you, they're getting gypped because my daughter goes to Catholic school and we always head off on November 1st because it was a holy day, uh, right. All Saints Day. Mm -hmm. So you would go out trick or treating on Halloween and you had the next day off and then you'd be like digging into your candy and, you know, putting back on your costume just for fun, you know, like it was great. It was like, it was like Halloween was at night and then the next day you had the day off. Uh, they don't do that anymore now because, yeah. you know, they used to say, well, you have off on the holy day so you can go to church. Well, now they just make the kids go to church during class. They'll be like, well, so I'm like, I'm telling my daughter, I'm like, you're getting gypped, man. But that was the thing. Uh, it was like Halloween. It was like a two day holiday. You went out. And then you had the next day off to just dig into your candy. It was great. Um, my dad, I'll tell you this, my dad, and he, he kind of instilled this in me a little bit, and I'm trying to fight it. I'm trying to, like, get over this because I know it's something my dad put on me. But my dad was very much like he felt Halloween was like um a neighborhood community thing. So he would get angry when kids would come to our house that he didn't recognize because he thought they were greedy. He's like, these are greedy kids just trying to get as much candy as they can because yeah. he always felt. Like, oh, yeah, it's going around seeing your neighbors, getting candy from your neighbors, and you come in and go, oh, you look so nice. What a great costume. Here's some candy. And and he, like, he, he didn't like um the when, when the strangers would start showing up because he's like, these are just kids out for as much candy as they can get. It's greed. They, we don't know them. They don't know us. Uh, so I'm trying to shake that. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you, and it's good that you're trying to shake that because – not every street or has, you know, access to, to trick or treating. And the idea, it's so cute. The idea that you know every, all of your neighbors and you could recognize them in costumes. That's, that to me is adorable. Um, we live out in the country right now and, um, we don't know our neighbors. We really yeah. don't. We don't know anybody coming by the right. house. It used to be a 13 foot hedge, but it's grown a bit. So I got like a 15 foot hedge on three sides of my property. <laughs> like if I, if I don't want to see my neighbors, I don't have to see my neighbors. It's amazing. <laughs> you can pretend you're the last man alive. It's the, it's the cool this little two thirds of an acre on the planet and uh we get along fine with our neighbors because we don't have to interact with them unless we want to 
but but yeah, like uh, except when we taught in the same neighborhood, like right now we we teach Aikido um, forty five minutes away, so we don't see any of our except we will this week year because Halloween is on a class night. So I'm doing a Halloween class. That's going to be fun. Oh, Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. They don't all have to come. And I told them if you're going to go trick or treating, that's fine. But if you're not going trick or treating, or if you want to go trick or treating after, um, I'm still running class and it's going to be all games and silliness. So, uh, and I'm bringing my lightsaber and having a lot of fun there. Uh, but, um, uh, so other than that time that we actually knew the kids because we were teaching them, we never knew our kid, the kids that were coming to us. So when we lived in the, not the last place we lived, but the place before that, we lived there for uh, three or four years and um, we were the street. And even though we were on a base, like everybody came to that street yeah. because it was just a straight line. We're going to, we're going to get to Halloween now. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get to Halloween now. But, uh, uh, Right now, I, the last couple of, um, the last couple of Halloweens, again, part of it's because it's post pandemic. We see like 10 kids. It's pathetic. There's another reason for that, yeah. which we'll get into. Yeah. But, and we, we live in t- uh, a townhouse. So, oh. you know, our community being a townhouse, there's a lot of doors, right. a lot of doors all lined up. So, uh, a lot of the people from neighboring, uh, towns, drive their kids to our development because there's just more doors for them to knock on. And that's, that's great. Yeah. Our, uh, yeah. So I'll get to it now, but anyway, our little village is sort of, there's a, a rail line, a major rail line that cuts our little village in half. And one side, uh, our side of the tracks is uh, the old part of the village. It's all farmhouses. They're all over a hundred years old. There's dairy farms down the road. The other side of the tracks is the new developments, the new subdivisions. All it's the where, townhouses. It's where the, you know, the, the, uh, the shopping plazas and the restaurants are, but it's where all the, the new subdivisions are. It's where all the rich people live. So there's no kids that go trick or treating in our neighborhood except the little, little kids because everybody else goes across town to the rich neighborhood to get the better candy. <laughs> because, and it's a subdivision. So you get, you know, it's not farm properties. It's a subdivision. So you get more, more properties per step. It's a higher ratio. So you fill your bag faster. So I totally, you know, as a, as a logical kid, I would have done the same thing. Also, there is the obstacle of our across the street neighbor. Oh, poor Mamere. She's a, she's a beautiful, lovely, chatty old lady. Town gossip. But the, the, the town gossip and she's bored and she's lonely. I last year we didn't see a trick or treater go by our house that wasn't stuck there for fifteen minutes. Oh, and what's your <laughs> costume? And how did you make that? And do you like it? And tell me more about the character. And she's just she's just friendly and chatty. Um, I love when she forgets that her Bluetooth speakers on the deck work, and she's inside having drunken karaoke, and she's just broadcasting it to the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> She's a, she's a lovely neighbor. Um, she's great. Her cat keeps most of the rodents out of my hedge, so at least we like Fluffy. <laughs> but Hall- Halloween for me as a kid, um, like I grew up in the in the north, uh, so I grew up in in Manitoba, and then uh, after that grew up in northern Ontario. So uh, not a lot of store bought costumes because it's really hard to buy a costume to fit over your snowsuit. You, you wouldn't want to, like Melissa was saying, about putting a coat on over your costume. Well, no, that kind of ruins the costume. You don't look like Superman anymore. Superman doesn't wear a winter coat. So you had to put the, the snowsuit on underneath your costume. Oh, but then you got built-in muscles. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You get like all puffy and cool and huge, but it was built. You know, we had to build our costumes. And there's always... um Always the fun of like trudging, uh, like trudging over snowbanks because it always snowed before Halloween when I was a kid. That's the one big thing I've noticed that's changing. It's that, uh, you know, you talk about like climate change and stuff, but like I remember like, like having to hurdle snowbanks to get up people's driveways and, you know, trying to fit, you know, trying to fit snow boots on with my costume so that I could, you know, survive the, 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 the arduous Arctic trudge, trudge to get Back candy. Back in my day. Back in my day. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, Halloween was, uh, the one big takeaway that the, the one big thing that I remember from Halloween is that I have a little sister and my little sister was the absolute master of using the words, but it's not fair. So if I got anything, I had to share. 
Doesn't matter what it was. If I got anything, I had to share with my little sister. And then when she got into a teenager, her argument was great. Oh my, I love this argument, guys. It was, she's two and a half years younger than me, but girls mature faster than boys. So technically we're the same maturity level. So I should get what he gets and I get it now. I really hate that that worked. (laughs) So what I loved about Halloween is that you get these little individual portion size candies and I don't have to share those. Because they're mine and they're only this big. So then there, take that, Dom. I don't have to share my candy because it's mine. And I went and got it. And me and my friends went further than you and your friends. So I get more candy. Don't have to share. Anyway. Um, <laughs> He's been hanging on to that one. I've been, oh, man. I, I hope she listens to the podcast she because won't. she won't. Do you but feel anyway. better now? No, oh, no, no, I, I, I got a lot more locked and loaded. Trust me. This is kind of, kind of this is going to be a very cathartic Halloween episode for a little time. Okay. <laughs> but, um, what's, uh, so let's go, let's go around again. But so like Halloween as a kid for me was a really fun time. Like I loved Halloween, got to dress up in a costume and my mom was a seamstress and, uh, she would home make all of our costumes, no matter what we wanted. Mom would sit there and work on our costumes and they were always amazing. And, um, we had so much fun and then we'd go for candy. We'd go trick or treating around the neighborhood. We'd see our friends. Sometimes we'd do parties. I remember when I was in Winnipeg, uh, one of the, uh, little girls in the neighborhood, her birthday was October 31st. Oh. So you'd go to her house. There'd be her birthday party. And then the birthday party would all leave the house to go trick or treating. And you'd come back for birthday cake. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It was so much fun. So, um, so what's Halloween like now for people? Like It's different when you're the one going trick-or-treating, but now that you're either dragging kids around or you're the one at the door or you're hiding in your house with the lights off because you want to eat the candy yourself. I mean, <laughs> why are you staring right at Jason? Right at Jason, directly <laughs> at my, my, my curmudgeonly old man here. Jason, what's Halloween for you, like for you now? Well, is it before I was working or after I became a student? Although, to be fair, the experiences are relatively the same. Uh, by same, I mean not happening, meaning um, Halloween has not been an adult thing I've been able to partake in. But Jen has taken it upon herself to make it her mission to facilitate diabetes in all the surrounding children. <laughs> I love it. But, because um... during, cause like during COVID, we started this during COVID, was... um. We put out, we would just sit a trough of candy outside and was like, take what you want. And kids loved it, right? Cause like they didn't have to meet anybody. They didn't have to like get near anyone. But the only problem was no one came to our street. Cause like, our <laughs> street, like, cause our street is next to the popular street. So like, yeah. so like, so luckily there was like a group of kids that came towards the end of the night and were just like, Hey, y'all, y'all, y'all still trick or treat. And they're like, yeah. So they just got dumped full of candy. <laughs> Sweet. But yeah, man, like honestly though, like as an adult, I haven't really been able to do much, uh, for Halloween. And well, it's been a while since you've done one, but what did you used to do on your podcast for Halloween? Oh, you know, the, oh, the insanity, uh, where I would watch, uh, 30 horror movies in 30 days. I'd watch a horror movie a day and, um, Honestly, until COVID, I had, I had not missed this. I had not missed. I had not missed. How until... many Halloween horror fests did you guys do? Uh, let's see. They're hanging up on the wall here. Started it unofficially in 2012. Six and then, or seven? so eight. yeah, we did. We've done at least well, eight. Nine. Yeah. Or, or not. I know Jay seven, and but... I were involved in the last three. Yeah, we've had we've had at least eight. Um, matter of fact, my 300th episode of the podcast was one of the horror fests. Actually, I I, lo- I love that you know eventually you started putting movies on because you had guests that would come on uh, to talk about some of these movies. And um, when you started like calling me out personally, I don't know if you realized you were doing this, but it's like I'm gonna put the original Saw on here, or I'm I'm gonna put Tremors, or got a got a Godzilla movie. It's like, ah, oh, Jason's doing it on purpose. You watch, ah. I mean, talk about this. You know, it's you know, and and to be fair, I've been thinking about throwing one out before the end of October because um um I did purchase, I did get back my Regal Unlimited, so now I can just basically go to see movies for free. Um, and the first movie I saw with it paid for it, so. 
Awesome. There you go. Because we because we went and saw uh, Killers of the Flower Moon in <gasps> IMAX. It's oh, I gotta see that. Two word review. Did you like it? Absolutely. Did you, did your theater was your theater one of the ones that put an intermission in, or did you watch the whole three and a half hour thing in one? Oh week? no, I oh no, I straight mainlined this thing three oh. hours and twenty minutes. <laughs> oh yeah, tech. We my my goal is for us to see this in theater, so oh. we need to go. Yeah. Uh, uh, bring your bladder. Yeah, bring, like bring uh, a diaper. Bring a diaper. It, listen, uh, I like. If Scorsese decides he wants another two hundred million dollar movie, go ahead, give it to him. I don't care what you, it is, just give it to him. Did you read the book? No, I see. I didn't even know it was a based on a book until I had seen the first trailer, and then after that, I was like, I'm not going to watch any more trailers or anything like that. So I read the book, and then I saw the trailer, and I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm reading this right now. Right. So, uh, it, how, how about you, Melissa? What's uh, what's Halloween like for you now? Um. We're still getting a feel for Halloween here. We are, we have, there's only one way in and out of our neighborhood and there are 232 houses of which 215 are actually occupied. Is this your we first actually, Halloween in your new? No, it'll be my second Halloween okay. in Florida. It was nothing like Halloween in Texas, but we've still got a good crowd and the neighbors all decorate. And like I said, there's the people up the street that give out grilled hot dogs and bottles of water. So that you're well fueled for the rest of the neighborhood, apparently. But no, we had a, we had a, we had a steady flow. I have a tradition. I started this in Texas when I needed to meet people because we knew no one. So I invited a few neighbors over and I cooked chili. And then we, we take turns answering the door while the chili cooks. And then when curfew comes or the end of trick or treating comes, we stop and we actually concentrate on eating this chili. Um, and then it grew into. Like everyone would come to my house because their houses didn't get a lot of trick or treaters. And I lived in one of those neighborhoods that people drive into because it was safe. And Joe, like you, it was really hard for me to, to deal with the fact that strangers were coming into my neighborhood. But a friend of mine posted a thing that said, you know, the kids who are driving into your neighborhood, they, probably don't have access to candy, as Nutty said. The kid who doesn't have a costume may not have a costume. The kid who looks like he's 18, that's not be his last vestige of childhood. Yeah. Or he could be 10 and just look like he's 18. Right. Or, you know, students in my class, we, we <laughs> would, we would have teenagers in their work uniforms because they oh. worked at the local grocery store. They worked at the local coffee shop. <laughs> They're on their way home at the end of their shift on Halloween with a candy bag. It's like, you know what? I'll give this one to you. My so. favorite was the one that came from Sobeys. She had just finished her shift at Sobeys. Which is a grocery store. And she brought everyone muffins. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So it was trick or treating. She was like, I didn't get to trick or treat. Um, but these are the leftover muffins and I'm handing them out to everybody. And I was like, so that's the now, coolest. now like our trick or treating comes, our trick or treaters come in two phases where like early you get all the little, little kids who are local. And then later in the evening are the people who aren't so local. So it's definitely two phases. But in Texas, because we lived there for 17 years, I got to see whole generations of kids grow up. And there was Aww. this pair of twins. One was blonde and one was redheaded. And they always had coordinating costumes. So they were always like the angel and the devil or <laughs> Gryffindor and Slytherin. Nice. <laughs> no typecasting. Um, and But it was funny because they got used to the fact that we always had chili cooking. And the, the boys would go, oh, right. This is the house. It always smells really good. <laughs> but I also, I have this arch. I didn't bring it with me. I left it in Texas because it was getting ridiculous. But I had this metal arch that I would put in front at the end of my sidewalk. And if you were too tall to go under the arch, maybe you didn't need candy. Um, <laughs> unofficially, I never, I never said no to anyone. It was Texas. They could shoot you. Um, <laughs> but, but so I had that. And then I had like a graveyard set up along the sidewalk against the brick wall. And people like our neighbors would come with their little kids and use that to pose for pictures. So my house is in like all these Halloween pictures of people I don't know, <laughs> but I love it. And here it's, it, the, it's harder because they don't come. We have. We have a gate at the end of our, it's an old house that has a very Latin style of architecture. So we all have arches with wrought iron in them and ours has gates at the end of our sidewalk. But then the front door is like 20 feet away. And so this year we've decided we're putting a table just right inside the gates and not trying to get kids to come all the way up the corridor. Uh, so we, we've talked a little bit about how, um, 
you know, we li- we were on the house and now we're not or the street and now we're not on the street. Um, but I also think that part of it is COVID related. You know, our first Halloween here, we didn't know are people not here because of COVID or are they not here because this is not the, the street? I think we've been able to, t- to determine after three Halloweens. Yeah, this is just this is just not the street that people will get a couple. So when we go and we'll be teaching um, on Tuesday, uh, I'm going to leave a bucket out. And I'll tell you, we we would we would sit by the house. We would hand out candy and we always go for a walk during Halloween because we want to see what's going on. The firehouse is around the corner. The firehouse is always handing out candy, too, which is really cute. Um, yeah, they pull a fire truck out. They let the kids climb on it. They do their whole. Oh, that's fire fantastic. Sp- yeah, they do a whole it's fire really safety sweet. speech. They have a little table set up and they got little goodie bags and yeah. candies that they give out to the neighborhood. And it's all done by the volunteers. Um, but, it's a uh, wonderful thing. But when we leave the bucket out, like people are not k- kids are not just grabbing everything. Like, you know how when we were kids, if there was that house that just had the bucket outside, kids would just grab everything. I'm not noticing that. Kids are not doing that. And even in my mom's neighborhood, uh, a couple, like about a year before COVID, uh, I had a, a work stint in New York. So I just extended my trip and I was able to do Halloween with my, with my nibblings. And there were two houses that had those and the kids all, I, I watched multiple groups of kids and they just go up and they just take one candy. And I'm sure there's some that are still like grabbing them all. But I think that there's this assumption of what kids are like. And I don't think kids are living up to that these days. Um, my big thing is, and I still have tons of it left over. So I'm going to do it again is I have. The candy treats, the full size bars. We also have full size cans of Coke so that if they prefer that, they can have that. Yes, we're going to hop them up on sugar and caffeine. Um, but we also have the little mini tubs of, uh, Play Doh. So we have a non edible. Oh, cool. Just, in, you know, just in case, depending on what, what the kids are going to, going to be interested in. So we're the, that kind of a house. And, um, you know what? I leave it out in a bucket. We come home. There's still stuff left there. They, I'm just so impressed by kids these days and uh back when we were the house we'd get those adult adult kids you know the older teens and you know what if you're still out trick-or-treating you still have that joy in your heart i don't care if you have a costume on you might not feel comfortable wearing your costume but then you're finding that magic of walking around and trick-or-treating i'm gonna encourage that i don't care i love it i never deny candy i do have an informal rating system but they don't know that i have a rating system system. (laughs) no like if you have a really nice homemade costume you're getting more candy from me if you're wearing one of those things those torturous things from the 70s that i thank god never had to wear with the plastic mask and the picture of the thing you don't i don't think radioactive (laughs) man walks around with a picture of himself on his no. well, he was, was talking. Halloween. I was talking to Fuzzy before this to see because he lived out in the middle of nowhere. His nearest neighbor neighbor was half a mile away, and I said, "Did you do Halloween?" He said, "Well, we would have a party at church." And I said, "Well, did you have costumes?" And I said, "Yeah, let me guess. Did your mom make them?" No, I had the things from the grocery store. No. I felt so bad for him. I think this is why he doesn't like cosplay now. Oh, how about you, Joe? What's <laughs> what's Halloween like now? Well, 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 first of all, not that depressing. First of all, I need to cite my great love for Ben Cooper and Collegeville costumes. Uh, I mean, Collegeville costumes, local company. It's uh, it was located, and they're not in business anymore. But they were located about uh, thirty minutes from my house, where I am now, and they made all those classic seventies and eighties and sixties costumes with the plastic masks and the rubber bands and the nice and vinyl. I, I mean, I've I know people that collect them. They're highly collectible. I have, there's a Mr. T costume from them that I've been eyeing up on eBay, but I don't want to drop the hundred bucks on it, but I, I want it. Uh, but anyway, um, <laughs> who doesn't anyway. want to be Mr. T for Halloween? I pity yeah, I mean, say. Well, I wouldn't be able to put it on. It would never fit me, but I, I just, I want it for my Mr. T shrine. I, I have a Mr. T shrine. I don't know if you know that. Uh, but anyway, that's a tangent for another day. Um, Halloween now. Well, Halloween has been rough. Um, as, as a married man with children, Halloween has been rough 
because I can't do anything fun. Um, <laughs> my, my daughter, Kira, uh, I refuse to take her trick or treating anymore. That's, that's her sister's job because she's afraid of everything. And I do mean everything, <laughs> every last thing. And it just gets to the point where you just, I don't have much hair left. And she has me tearing my hair up. <laughs> and she's like, no, daddy, I can't go near that house. They got, they got a picture of, of a, of a pumpkin in the window. And you're like, what? It's like, you don't know. She's eight years old. She's afraid of it. I can't take her in Walmart. I can't take her in Home Depot. I can't take her anywhere because they'll have Halloween ornaments up and she's terrified of them. Meanwhile, um, you have a squirrel pumpkin in the, in the front of your house. Yeah, the, well, the squirrel pumpkin. Well, oh man, there's another story. We could do a whole podcast on the squirrel pumpkin. Um, but anyway, squirrels uh, have no souls. Uh, yeah, I've been working on a squirrel pumpkin. Uh, where you get a pumpkin and you punch some holes in it, kind of make a loose outline of a face, and you punch some holes and you fill them with peanut butter and you leave it outside. And the squirrels are supposed to gnaw at it and uh, make the face for you. But because it's not being done with a skilled hand, it's being done by uh, right. animals that are just trying to get the peanut butter. It ends up looking freakish and weird. Um, it didn't work. Uh, it didn't work. No, but they anyway. look great. They look like melted Salvador Dali paintings. They're fantastic. They're so yeah, much kind of dead. But but the ones in my thumbnail uh, were what they're supposed to look oh. like. Oh, <laughs> that's that's not how they turned out. Can you tell we didn't actually click on the video? <laughs> we watched sumo videos instead. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, but yeah, that's kind of Halloween now. I can't really like I, I like watching, you know, some horror movies. Can't do that. Kids don't want to see them. Christine doesn't want to see them. Um, you know, it's just, you know, I don't know. It's it's kind of it's kind of rough. It's kind of rough living Halloween when you're the only person in the house that likes Halloween. I, and and I, Joe is is coming to us live from his lair of all things fun and toys uh, and games. There is an arcade cabinet right behind him, <laughs> and you you just we oh, we man. feel your pain. I I wish I wish I, was, I wish I was anywhere near closer because I somehow think a Halloween Mortal Kombat two marathon, uh, might <laughs> uh, might be fun. But uh. Man, I, man, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I live so far away. I mean, yeah. I love grown up Halloween. Agreed. I would uh, totally watch horror movies with you. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And so Halloween for me, Halloween is a couple of things. One, it means I can blare my music to the neighborhood. <laughs> because on, on Halloween night, I will open the windows. I will crank the stereo in the living room and I will put on some of my favorite music that I listen to all year round because I grew up listening to classical music because classical music doesn't have lyrics that my mom can misunderstand, so therefore she cannot object to. So I listen to a lot of classical music. I love the music of Bach. Bach wrote a lot of pieces for the organ, including... Kira will be scared. Of course. <laughs> that, in that includes everybody's favorite, Toccata and Fugue, but a bunch of other stuff that sounds... Just as creepy and cool and weird. So I'll put on like the best of Bach organ works and just here I am bopping around the house like it's a disco track as I'm the only person in the world who like grooves through the living room to Jezu Joy of Man's Desiring. <laughs> I'm having a, I'm having a party. And then, you know, if I'm going like we don't go trick or treating, we don't have kids. I'm not going to go door to door, but we will walk around the neighborhood and look at other decorations and see what's going on at the fire hall and walk down the main street, see the businesses, look at everyone's costumes, silently judge them. But man, it's, it's like, and Jason will be the one who remembers this, but I have a, um, a water bottle that is a spun aluminum water bottle that you can't see what's inside. And it's normally filled with. Cider. Cider. Let's call it. But I, I get to enjoy an adult beverage while I walk around my neighborhood. And it is a full-sized adult beverage, and I have a fun time. Uh, it makes me happy. Uh, another thing that I love to do, and I'll, I'll talk about this more later when I get to my other questions, but Nutty is a lot better at dealing with kids than I have. I have a bad temper. Not a bad temper. I, 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 I get grumpy. And... um. Kids ask stupid questions. So I'm not the best. I'm not the best person to be the face of our family. Nutty does a much better job of it. While she does that, 
I get to be the creepy weird one. And I get to be the one who scares kids, which to me is the most fun I can have on Halloween. And I'll tell you, the one thing I don't like in the movies that I watch, the media that I consume when it comes to horror movies or when it comes to like Halloween stuff, I hate jump scares. Jump scares are the cheapest way to get a scream out. I would rather go for the long creep out or the gross out than go for the, oh, you startled me. Like th- That's such a cheap way to get a reaction. So whenever I'm scaring somebody, they see me coming, I'm not moving quickly, and I'm not yelling. And I just, I'll sit there, and I've done it before where I'm in my Plague Doctor costume, and I'm just absolutely motionless. And then as the child is transfixed on the big bag of candy that Nutty is letting them choose, and they're like rummaging around to try and to find like the, 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 the nicest piece, I like lean in really, really close and tap them on the shoulder. And when they turn and their head on into a plague mask. Now, I have had reactions from a kid turning, looking at me and going, this isn't real. You're fake and rip the mask off my face <laughs> to a child go completely catatonic fall down onto the lawn on their bum and then do the backwards bum scooch all the way back to the to the sidewalk to the 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 sheer pleasure and giggles of their parents of their parents of that course. are worse parents the, 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 are consenting they see everything that's happening the parents here. the parents walk them up from the road and the parents are staying on the sidewalk and the kids come up the driveway they go to the front and i just i just i leaned in close to her ear and i just tapped her on the shoulder and then she turned and she backwards butt scooched down the lawn back to her dad screaming the whole way would not return to the house until i took my mask off it was would not take the candy from me i had to put the candy in the bag for her we had one who's driving by while this is going on refuse to get out of the car I had to go to the window of the car to drop the candy in the bag because they were so scared they wouldn't they wouldn't get out of the car, which I I love that. I think that. my favorite was the parent who was like, if you can't go get the candy, you don't get it. I said, that's fair. Dad, do you want the candy? And he goes, yeah, I'll take the candy. I'll take the candy. <laughs> Dad's and then, eating the and candy. And the kid's like, wait, do I get it? No, you didn't go and get it. <laughs> but uh, I hey, think my... K- Kira wouldn't go near your house. No, no. Well, she wouldn't go near mine either. I have a six foot tall animatronic witch that guards the candy (laughs) (laughs) with a motion sensor. I call her Aunt Agatha. Nice to be fair. There is one year when we had first gotten her and, and this little tiny pint size, like maybe, maybe five years old, a little, um, I don't know if she was black or Hispanic because it could have gone either way. She was adorable. She was dressed in a Dia de los Muertos Katrina costume. She comes up Aunt Agatha does her thing. She puts her hands on her little, I mean, her tiny little fists and her tiny little waist. And she goes, I could take you. <laughs> awesome. The, the thing that I love is that I could never tell. It was never based on gender, age, or maturity. Yeah. I could never tell who was going to stand up to my Plague Doctor costume or who was going to run away. Because and some I've of made, them were just like, oh, that's so cool. I've made teenagers cry, and I've had four-year-old little girls look at me and go, no, you're not real. <laughs> um, my, my favorite, though, is it happened at least once a year where I would make a Captain America cry. Oh. And there's a kid in like the puffy Captain America suit with the fake muscles and the little plastic shield. You just, ah. oh, I made Cap cry. This is, please. I, I feel kind of bad. Please tell me that when you made Captain America cry, you said, I could do this all day. Oh. oh. <laughs> now, to be fair, the Plague Doctor costume has been retired and you have not replaced a creepy costume since the pandemic um we do need to come up with something i'm thinking death from uh the disc world series would be a oh, really that would be oh, awesome. I love death especially so much. if you have like um like we just get you a skeleton arm that you reach out from your cloak oh man i haven't figured out a costume to answer the door with this year i i'm gonna need a costume that i can roll around in and i can't i couldn't i can't get jedi robes uh I figured that I was going to try and do something with Jedi robes. I can't quite get that together. You're the favorite. I've just got to get up. My favorite costumes that you have made, Nutty, when you did Princess Leia on the Forest Moon of Endor. Oh, I could do my Princess Leia. 
That was an awesome costume. You had longer hair then, though. I don't know if you can do the hair style with the hair you have now. It was a prosthetic. The braids? Yes, that, was, that wasn't my hair. Okay, well then fine. Then <laughs> go ahead. Then go ahead. <laughs> um, but the other one that you had so much fun with is you dressed up as Ursula the Sea Witch. Yeah, I can't do Aikido in that. No, you dressed up as Ursula the Sea Witch with like a um a skirt full of like foamy tentacles. But I think you, you showed me that one. But you made all the kids sing for their candy. Well, some of them were like, uh-uh, I know what happens. But uh, please tell the story of the little boy. So um, I, I would ask the kids to sing when they came to get their candy. I had the I had the, the, the gold shell around my neck. I had the tentacles, the, the divine-esque makeup and everything. And the kids were all into it. Um, and then one kid comes up and he, he just starts singing the whole Ariel song. And so I sing with him and he goes, but that's not my favorite Disney movie. I said, what's your favorite Disney? And he goes, ah, my favorite Disney movie. Cause it has the best songs is the Aristocats. So we start singing the Aristocats and I, we just start with everybody the- wants to be a cat. The little dude knew every word. We that's because that's because little man has good taste. Little man has does, good taste. He does have good taste. You know, I was telling this saw story to um, the sensei we teach with. He's uh, in his seventies, and um, I was I was telling him this story, and I said something. I said, you know, the Aristocats, and I said, you know, it, it's you know the Disney movie about. He goes, puts his hand on my shoulder, and he goes, I Nutty, I know what the Aristocats are. I have, I you. have. Three children. (laughs) (laughs) And his children were at the right age when they were, the the movie was released from the vault. Um, But uh, yeah, no, I I definitely have gotten in my adult age into the whole idea of cosplay with my Halloween costumes because I love playing into the character that I'm dressed as. So from, uh, from a time in your life, Mm. the question for everybody from a time in your life, um, What's your favorite Halloween costume that you've had? Or maybe if you haven't had one, one that you've always wanted. But uh, for me, I, like my mom used to hand make my costumes. And I remember one she surprised me with. She made me a, um, I was Storm Shadow from G.I. Joe, the, the white ninja. But he's got the Cobra logo in red on the breast of his white sort of ninja suit. Mom couldn't find that design anywhere. So had my dad tape an episode of G.I. Joe so she could pause it on the logo, went and got craft paint and hand painted the Cobra head logo onto the onto the breast of my of my costume. And then my dad teaching me how to use modified head bandages to wrap to make my ninja mask and and stuff. Uh, Probably my uh, my, you know, I mean, the plague doc is an easy one to go to. But of all my costumes. The fact that my parents put that much work into it, I mean, mad respect to them, but I love that Storm Shadow costume. I must have been about seven or eight at the time. That's fantastic. I need to see pictures of this. How about, yeah. how about you, Nutty? So my mom also made all of our costumes, and mostly because there's a lot of us. So she wasn't buying, you know, eight costumes a year. It just wasn't happening. So uh, we also had this, we had the costume box. So they would get reused. In Canada, that's called a tickle trunk? Yeah. <laughs> for, for Americans, that's not a dirty thing. I know it sounds a little dirty, but it's 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 Canada's Mr. Rogers. Actually, Mr. Rogers used to work on Mr. Dress Up. So yeah, the tickle trunk. Um, but uh, so we we always had our costume box. So we had some amazing costumes in there. We had a couple of clowns in different sizes. We had a couple of, uh, you know, witches. We had the cowardly lion costume, which my mother's father made for her. And he made it. <laughs> this is a full body cowardly lion costume. Yes. He made it from the, um, the pelts of the rabbits they had who had died. <laughs> They, 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 there was they, a that they were eating. No, they were not eating. Oh, they weren't eating the rabbits. Okay. They were originally going to, yeah. but they got sick and they all like he had a whole litter just like oh, no. adult rabbits just die. And so he ended up making a costume out of it. And that my mother wore as a child and every single one of us wore it all the way down to my third niece who when she wore it, she wore it as it was um 
Crash Bandicoot. She just had the hood because the rest of it had been just disintegrated and mothballed and all of these other things. But we had all different ones to choose from. And every now and then we'd put together something new, like my, uh, my brother I have when, when, uh, my sister was the cowardly lion. We've got pictures. My brother is the tin man and he's just covered in aluminum foil, you know? Uh, my, my other brother, the wounded soldier, he's got like blood all hanging out of him. But no, for me, it was the, one of the few times I was allowed to go trick or treating. Uh, I, it was me. I was the, the chaperone for my younger sister and we were going around the neighborhood and we were finally allowed to go trick or treating. And, um, I made a, st- I was a stop sign. So I got a big box and I painted, spray painted it red and I made the shape with like medical tape and then made the stop. And I had armholes and I wore like gray pants and we just went around and I'm walking around in this giant box. Um, but it was great. It just, it was a conceptual costume. I don't remember what my niece was. Um, but my niece, my, my sister was, but at one point, some older kids thought they were going to pick on us. And I only got to go trick or treating twice in my life for real. I didn't come to play. I didn't have a little plastic pumpkin. Uh, uh-uh. uh, I had a pillowcase because I was getting lots of candy that day. So the pillow, we, the pillowcase kids are the serious kids. The pillowcase kids are the serious kids. So I had my Star Wars pillowcase and, uh, these older kids decided that they were going to, uh, to, to harass us and, and try to beat us up or something. And they, I saw them coming after my little sister and I had a pillowcase half full of candy. I got violent. Can you swing a sack of doorknobs? I swung a sack of candy, and the, the, here comes this stop sign just wailing at these kids. And they go. I running. said stop. But if hey, you look. ask anyone in my family to this day, they all go, oh, Nutty had the best costume when she was a stop sign. Hey, look, if you use Tootsie Rolls, it doesn't leave bruises. <laughs> That's when you're looking for the house that gives out like oranges and apples. Hey, where's the dentist's house? <laughs> Where them picks at? What about what about you, Joe? Did you have a favorite costume? Well, that's a good question. I uh, I have old man brain, and it's hard for me to remember a lot of my costumes. But one that does stick out in my mind. So I guess it's my favorite. It just in that it was memorable. Uh, was my mom made me, and this would have been around 1983 when it was the hottest thing around. Uh, she made me an Ewok costume. <gasps> oh, cool. And, um, and I remember how she made it too, because it was like she made me the, the like furry, uh, bodysuit. But then on top of that, uh, she went and got like one of those, like Ben Cooper masks we were talking about of like Chewbacca, and she glued fake fur all over it. Oh, and made a, a headdress to go over it. So, like, you know, they always had those, like, headdress scarves that would, uh, you know, over their faces. Mm-hmm. So I had one of those. And, uh, yeah. And, uh. That's fantastic. That, that's the one I remember the most. Yeah. It's, um, it just like my, uh, like, the Plague Doctor beak mask that I wear underneath it is a, um, it's a, Friday the 13th Jason Voorhees hockey mask that I found <laughs> that we found for cheap at a Halloween store and then everything else on top of it is a a, a foam florist cone and paper mache to make it into <laughs> the 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 plague beak. Uh I I love that that type of ingenuity. Uh how about how about the rest of you guys? What uh, what were your favorite Before costumes? everybody answers, I just want to say I've been googling these Ben Cooper Collegeville costumes mm-hmm. and they are so classic. Um but some of the most horrifying, I think, are um, the Bebop and Rocksteady masks. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. They scare me. If I oh, can no. show you something real quick. Yeah. I had a, a, at a convention about a year ago, and he died a few months after the convention. I was at a horror movie convention, and I ran into the guy who painted the smocks, the pictures that appeared on the smocks yeah. for Ben Cooper. And he was selling prints of the art that he would put on the smocks and I bought uh, two of them from him. I bought the King Kong. Oh, oh cool. Fantastic. This is like, it would have appeared on the, on the vinyl smock of the King Kong Ben Cooper costume. And I got Darth Vader and we all know Darth Vader loved to wear the words star Wars across his right chest. Right on his shirt. Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> and he wore 
a picture of himself. Yes, and, yeah. and yeah. as we <laughs> as we all know, Darth I feel Vader like is- that's actually kind of legit because he is sort of narcissistic. <laughs> yeah, and we, and we and we all know that he's a fan of yellow. Yes, yes, <laughs> yellow. <laughs> uh, 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 Jason, Melissa, please chime in. Favorite costumes. You know, I'm thinking about my favorite costumes, and I'm. I, in, we are so politically correct now that I'm afraid some of them would be go would be looked at as being really um, emblematic of appropriation, even though that was never the intent. And I never did like brown face when I was Pocahontas or anything, because right. um, you know there are limits. So I was Pocahontas when I was six, and it was adorable because I still had hair you could braid. And my mom also made all my costumes and. When I was, I think, one of the years in Georgetown, I was Batgirl. And that was probably my favorite of all of them. We actually, we used satin for the ears. Did you have a red wig? I did not because when I was little, my hair was strawberry blonde. Oh, that's fantastic. (laughs) I love it. So when I got older and was in school in San Francisco, we went to the Castro Halloween party which is the ultimate Halloween party on the West coast. It's in DuBose triangle. It's you, before you go in, the sisters of perpetual indulgence have to bless you. Um, there are usually nuns on roller skates. Sweet. And so that, that year was like 1988. So it was the height of the AIDS epidemic. And my stepfather was working for environmental protection stuff. So he brought us two clean suits. So my friend and I went in clean suits with signs that said safe sex in the nineties. And even though it was still the 80s and handed out condoms. Political mm-hmm. Halloween. I love it. Political I'm Halloween. Like, and I'm over here like, I was I was Michelangelo for one Halloween. Ha. <laughs> no, that's that right. Was like your favorite costume because oh, really, like, that 100%. is your boy. Yeah, <laughs> like, come on. Mikey's like your hero. Yeah. Like, like listen, he eats pizza, uses nunchucks, and he talks trash. Like, what, like, what else? Like what else do you need? But no, um, honestly though, uh, my favorite actually was probably I I just remember this that I actually did get to celebrate uh, Halloween in lieu of actually having to work that day. I still got to celebrate it back when I was an assistant manager in GameStop. We all actually got to come in in ho- costumes. I actually went as Jason Voorhees. Uh, I actually nice. went and got a uh, uh, this guy actually did some handcrafted like um, he takes those like plastic hockey masks you can get from like any spirit Halloween Mm -hmm. and he gets the varnish off and then he hand paints them to look like iconic Jason Voorhees masks from the movies. Oh, so no, like with the red triangles. Yeah, oh, red triangle, great. blue triangle. Yeah, yeah. And so I had I I went and did that uh for one year. That was probably my favorite. Because like Jason Voorhees is also my favorite horror movie villain. So like But I'm we s- we need to I'll do be. it one year. The, it needs to happen that we need to do Jason and Freddy. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We need to get you a Smedium uh striped sweater. Absolutely. Hat, finger razors, uh no. horrible burn scars. Jason I know you don't do a lot of cosplay, but because Joe brought it up earlier, you would do a great Mr. T. Ah! Oh, you I would. Don't have enough, I don't have enough chains. I don't have enough chains. We'll get you chains, man. We'll we, get you chains. We will get you chains. And that'll be your lifting for the day. <laughs> yes, just carry To yes. be fair, Mr. T doesn't wear chains anymore. Yeah. Uh, and every time he does an interview, he gives a different reason why. So uh, I That's get the amazing. feeling he's making it up as he goes along. I think oh, absolutely. He is. Like, I think like he is. Joker origin stories. I've also heard multiple stories as to why he's Mr. T. Like I've heard him say different stories. Mm. They're all pretty much around the same thing that he never wanted to be called boy. He wanted to be called Mr. Yeah. But they're all like just a little bit different. Um, which I'm good with. He is the Joker. man can tell I think that's story. half the fun. Yeah. I, I love good about yourself. I loved once he was being interviewed by La- uh, Larry King. Mm. Uh, you can find this on YouTube. Mr. T is being interviewed by Larry King and Larry King says, uh, what was your birth name? And he says, Lawrence T rod. And he says, so you're, you're Larry. And he goes, not if you respect me. If you respect me, you won't call me Larry. And Larry King goes, "What's wrong with the name Larry?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the na- the thing that's wrong with the name Larry Larry King is that he's not Larry. He's Mister T. That's why. Like, that's the that's the problem because we he's a part of the, the chosen identity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you very much. Yes. No, I can just see him now. You want to know how I got these chains? <laughs> 
like the joke. I pity the fool who questions Mr. T's chains. Well, he's he's <laughs> consistent on what the chains mean. Yes. It's just why, yeah, the, the chains are because his ancestors were brought to this country in chains and he turned his chains to gold. But he's very uh all I over the that. place as to why he doesn't wear them anymore. <laughs> Listen, uh, it's probably heavy. Like, let's be honest. Like, you've been rocking, <laughs> you've been rocking 10 pounds of gold chains for he's the last 50 the years. Because his doctor told him if he doesn't, <laughs> yeah. his disc yeah. degenerates. <laughs> yes. yes, your degenerative disc disorder is accelerated by your, by this your is, acquisition of pounds your, of gold. Your sciatica is never going to get better if you don't take off that 48 pound golden <laughs> horse collar. You're he wearing goes, everywhere. He goes, <laughs> he goes to Flavor Flav's doctor and Flavor Flav, he just has the clock on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to once uh, to apologize for once again derailing uh, a, a show and making it about Mr. T. I seem to do that a lot. You know what? I go. Any show that derails and ends up being about Mr. T is a good yes. show, in my opinion. I, I agree. Fool who doesn't talk about Mr. T? And, <laughs> and if you need Mr. T delight, now I'm not talking to Joe here. I'm talking to the listeners. If you need some delight and. Uh, some new Mr. T material, and I mean new as in it happened in the last 20 years, um, find where Mr. T discovers curling <laughs> in the Olympics and starts becoming a curling fan. Listen, I feel, like, sport. I feel like at this point, we need to see if Mr. T's into sumo. Ooh, that would be fun. Mr. T be doing sumo commentary i would be all i in. pity the fool who doesn't eat chonko it's a great <laughs> it's a well balanced it's a well balanced meal it's full of protein good for the children good for the kids <laughs> exactly um so speaking of chonko i uh, halloween treats because uh, chonko you can enjoy all year round but there are some treats and snacks and candies and things that we can only find in this very narrow time period between the, the end of october and just before thanksgiving so um what's everybody's like favorite halloween treat for me i i don't know i i'm still the one of the babies on this on this panel but being an older person like i remember before the the razor blade and needle scares that uh halloween was still the time that you'd get caramel apples and i love caramel apples but there's also a a, a very special uh memory that in my family uh, growing up, caramel apples, that was the treat that grandma would make when you were just about to lose a tooth and it was stubborn and it wasn't falling out. And they're like, oh, you're having a problem with that tooth? Would you like a caramel apple? Crunch up, <laughs> out goes the tooth. Every time worked like a charm. See, but I, see, as soon as the leaves, as soon as the leaves start changing, it's, it's sweet potato pies in this house. Like, oh, yeah. like. Like oh, it's just like yum. as soon as the leaves start to change colors, like it sweeps into the But I will say, I I too like Mr. Crazy Joe. Am a solid candy corn fan. I am a fan of candy corn. Like I feel like candy corn gets a bad rap at this time of year. Uh, I feel other candies are overrated. Uh, for this time of year, I feel so like what we, what candy is overrated? Honestly and truly, almost any mainstream chocolate candy that you get for Halloween, because you get it all year round. Yeah, you get it all year fair. round. I can get a Snickers any day of the week. You know what I'm that's saying? Fair. I I agree. I fair. Mean, for me, um, I I agree. I love the idea of the c- candy that only comes around Halloween. I love candy corn. Give me candy corn. Don't give me candy corn for Easter, by the way. I don't want <laughs> no. Easter. Oh, the pastel stuff. That's yeah, so wrong. No, no, no. It needs but, to be but legit East- orange, yellow, white candy. Yeah. Corn. Easter, Easter or pumpkin it- shapes. E- Easter has their own candies. That's what it's, peeps are for. That's what jelly uh, beans, uh, Cadbury uh, Easter, egg, uh, the Cadbury eggs, jelly bean. Listen, jelly beans are for Easter. Like, yeah. like they I don't need their, you. Easter's in got its own thing, you know. Yeah. But it, 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 in addition to candy corn, um, the and I will, I will never hate on anyone for liking these. By the way, the marshmallow peanuts, you like those, enjoy them. I'm not gonna hate on you, but we would always get. Um, they were called Mary Janes, and it uh, was a peanut butter ugh. taffy. <laughs> and Joe is hating on this, but it was a peanut butter taffy. I My teeth hurt just filling, thinking about those. Fillings, it's not good, but inside yeah. is crunchy peanut butter. I oh. love those things. They, I, they're probably absolutely terrible if you have fillings, but or or braces. But I love them. Look, my name is Nutty. Okay, you're I like a good thing. That, you're you know, one of those. You're one of those cowtail people, aren't you? Oh, Tech loves the cowtails. Oh my god, you know those cowtails. Like, 
I, like I the, got you the giant little rope thing. Now, now we just go straight to nerds rope for tech. So, oh, the, okay, yeah, those yeah. are great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, those uh, things, no Mary those things Jane's, are like uh, you... Laffy Taffy, uh, the 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 long strips of Laffy Taffy, the banana flavored. I have genetically horrible teeth. If I ate any of that, I would have no teeth. <laughs> I'm a sucker for you candy know the, apples. I don't want caramel apples. No, the caramel. red glazed candy apples are the oh, best. Yes. Um, there you go. I want to say, I am also on the candy corn train, but I have a thing for sweet tarts. Oh, I love sweet tarts. Sweet tarts. Mm-hmm. And I only, and again, you really only get them at Halloween, but, but our other tradition, our family tradition is that even though we're all amazing bakers at Halloween, we get grocery store cupcakes with orange frosting. All right. Oh, by the way, one of uh, my students, he's not coming on Halloween. He gave everybody goodie bags for Halloween candy, and I didn't open it all the way up. I was looking at the different thing. He gave me a little mini cat pack of candy cigarettes. Do you know they still sell those? They wow. still exist? The, the little Popeye yeah. cigarettes? Yes! yes. Popeye brings they have it. everything. They have it. They have it. Listen, you, you say it, you're say you literally saying they've kept some fun things for Halloween. I haven't seen those in decades. Yes, I would absolutely say oh, I haven't man, seen those man. in decades. We can do an entire thing about like inappropriate products for kids, but like big league chew. It's like oh, let's, make, let's make fake tobacco products for children. I saw man. that this week. Oh my god. I just bought some big league chew like a couple weeks ago too. <laughs> of course you did. Before I started my diet. Before <laughs> To be fair, uh, sure bubblegum is bubblegum is okay. <laughs> so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make Melissa's teeth fall out. <laughs> Before you do that, I would just like to point out that candy corn is gluten free and fat free. <laughs> so the, it's sugar following, and dye. <laughs> so this following snack that I'm going to mention is also gluten free, and and well and and well it's not sugar free, but anyway, <laughs> no. this, this is something that my mom would make. I don't know where she got this recipe Uh-oh. from, but I remember having this as a kid. It's amazing. So. She would take um, the um, the the drink crystal packs of Kool Aid that you would get, and you know you're supposed to mix that with water. Mm-hmm. Well, instead of mixing it with water, you mix that with corn syrup, and you make a like like a goo out of like like Kool Aid powder, and then you pop a fresh batch of popcorn, and then roll popcorn balls mm. okay. into a syrupy yep, Kool Aid yep. goo. You will lose teeth to this. You will lose a <laughs> foot to diabetes. Your cataracts will grow a mile thick. Um, so and- I was at Bulk Barn this weekend. They had those for sale. Really? They had them for sale for Halloween. Oh, they're so I, I have seen those, but I have never actually tasted or owned one. The, the, they're, well, just think of the what your favorite flavor of Kool Aid or of drink powder, and then just I never drank Kool Aid, and then well, imagine or a drink powder, to it. or imagine what it would taste like. It, My it experience like Jolly with, Ranchers, okay, I like, like those. My experience with Kool Aid Tech is that you mix it with egg whites to make Mohawks. Sweet, mm-hmm. yes, absolutely, <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's what we do. <laughs> oh, totally a thing um, for your hair because it stiffs. No, it no, makes no, it no, stiff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with I you. I thought you were talking about a drink. I'm googling. I'm like, what's a Mohawk? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no. My experience with with because I was an '80s yeah. kid, so yeah. My experience with Kool Aid is that that's how you make a mohawk. Oh no, I'm totally with you. Um, so. I didn't get my favorite treats yet. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, what are yours? Please, please, please carry on, Joe. <laughs> no, I, I obsess over candy corn. I love candy yeah. corn, especially the pumpkins. The pumpkin shaped ones are the best. And I love. Um, I, I'm I'm obs- obsessed. With marshmallow peeps, and Halloween is the only time you can get the ones shaped like Frankenstein heads and ghosts. Oh yeah, um, the Frankenstein head peeps and the ghosts and the tombstones they make, and I love those. Okay, and, wait, uh, I, got, I got a question though about your peeps. Yeah, do you eat them straight out of the package, or do you cr- open the package and let them dry out for a day and then eat them? Uh, I, I got to eat them. Straight. They got to be fresh. They okay. got to be fresh. Now I had an ex girlfriend who used to buy the peeps, slit a hole in them. Put them on the fridge for a week uh, so they could ripen. Um, what? Yeah, that's that's yeah, not you me. Get the, they they end up getting like a stale. They like, get crunchy, um, like uh, Lucky Charms. Yeah, oh. I like they them. Get, like, I like them soft, crunchy on the outside. 
But I also love the the monster cereals that you can only get this time of year. Booberry and Frankenberry and uh, Count Chocula. And the brand new one for this year, Carmella Creeper. And Carmella Creeper is delicious, I got to tell you. That That actually sounds pretty good. Hey, also, if you like cereals, Snoop Dogg has his own cereal, by the way. Snoop Dogg (laughs) has his own cereal. Yeah, he went in with Master P and they're making kid cereals now. (laughs) Real talk, look it up. Is is Carmella like a caramel flavor? Is it's it... supposed to be a caramel flavor, but I think it tastes more like maple syrup. Oh my god, that's even better! I would love that. It looks so pretty. It's got like green faces and yeah. weird uh, ghost marshmallows. This would be so good on ice cream. I've always it's wanted really to try. good. I've always wanted to try. But has anybody ever done that thing where you can take a can of condensed milk and then you boil it to make caramel? Has anybody ever done that? I have not. Yeah. If you, you put a pot of boiling water on the stove, you take I a whole can of condensed done. milk and just drop it in the boiling water. If you wait long enough, you open the can. It's just a can of caramel. I need to I need to try this. I don't know why I haven't yet, but just 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 imagine little Techie silently growing fatter on the couch as he eats an entire can of caramel is is what's going to happen. Listen, uh, the only way I, I looked know... it up and apparently caramel creeper is supposed to be caramel apple. Ooh. Yes, but it, but it doesn't taste like that, I don't think. I, I think it tastes like maple syrup. I mean I can see how that's similar. It's like, very good. In, in terms of a synthetic flavor, I can see how that's similar. Here's the thing. I, I don't want to derail the show, but I got a question for you. Uh, no. Nutty, if we if we have a second, would you like to hear the best Mary Jane Halloween story I have? Oh, yes, I would. Well, we all that, would. That, that candy, that, yeah. This is that horrible candy that Nutty was this, this This involves, <laughs> this, this is part of why I was laughing. Uh, this, this involves Mary Jane's. Uh, it's uh, Halloween 1999. My friend was working at Borders Books and Music. I don't know. It's every, does everyone know what Borders Books and Music yeah, yeah, was? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't yes. exist anymore. Uh, but there was a guy working there, uh, this guy Carmen we knew, and Carmen had a Dr. Zayas costume and he was, co- and they were having a costume From Planet contest. Of the Apes. Yeah. Yes. Planet of the Apes guy. They were having a costume contest for the employees. The employees were going to dress in costume and the patrons had to vote on who had the best costume of the employees. And Carmen's like, I'm going to win. I got this in the bag. My Dr. Zayas costume, the mask, the mouth moves. I got this in the bag. So he starts pissing off everybody. And they're like, we got to beat Carmen because he's just, you know, talking trash to everybody about how he, he doesn't stand a chance of losing. So my friends Dave and Tony come up with a plan. And here's what happens. Carmen comes out. He's got his Dr. Zayas mask on and um, the crowd starts cheering because it was a really good costume. And then Tony comes out in a business suit and a monkey mask. But it's like a gorilla mask you would buy off the rack. Just this rubber gorilla mask and a business suit. And they bring him out and the crowd's just like, eh, you know, like nothing special. My friend Dave jumps up and goes, this is not my monkey's costume. This is not my monkey's costume. And he gets out a boom box and he puts on the boom box and stripper music starts playing. And he goes, strip monkey, strip. And Tony starts taking off the business suit <laughs> and he's got a French maid outfit on underneath. <laughs> and the crowd's already going crazy. So then Dave goes, the monkey needs a cape. And he brings out like a tiara and a superhero cape with a picture of a monkey on the back. And he puts it around Tony's neck. And then Tony gets a shovel with a monkey symbol on it. And he starts filling the shovel with Mary Jane's and launching Mary Jane's into the crowd. No, that's dangerous. (laughs) Take an eye out with those things. They're hard. Well, needless to say, he beat Carmen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yay! Oh man! Oh, that's fantastic! That's... I love it. And with that note, we've got a little bit of a treat. Okay. Because I invited Paul Mackey to join us tonight. This is almost like a a, a dog days reunion tonight. Um, <laughs> but uh, he he's working, and he asked that I share a little uh, recording that he made. So I have no idea what's in this. I haven't listened to it. So we're going to listen to it together. 
You know we can see your screen, right? Yeah. Well, that's how I'm sharing the sound. Hello, nutty tech and guests. This is Paul Mackey from One Idiot's Thoughts on Podcast. I heard you were talking Halloween traditions and would have loved to join you if I were not at work tonight making sure the citizens of Duluth get their Sunday night PBS. There's probably a lot of things being discussed tonight, but in the interest of some sort of brevity, I'll go with cold weather Halloween. I grew up in... <laughs> St. Paul, Minnesota, so one thing costumes needed was to either incorporate or be easily modified to use coats. It was an occasional bummer to have a well-thought-out costume and then have the temperatures drop out Halloween week, with Mom insisting you wear a coat when you went out. There were a few occasions when it wasn't an issue, but the cold weather was well worth planning for. A few examples come to mind. First was when Mom was more involved in the decisions, and I ended up dressed up as an Emmett Kelly-style hobo clown, so an old coat was an easy choice. In 1984, I did myself up in a homemade costume of the ghost eventually known as Slimer. Since the blob body was represented by a green lawn and leaf garbage bag, a coat could be worn underneath without noticing. And a couple years later, when I decided to dress as a mailbox, a coat was also easily worn inside the kid-sized box that I had chosen. These days, since the kids were old enough to make the rounds themselves, we find ourselves in Duluth, Minnesota, where cold temperatures are pretty much a given. Darcy and I put out the fire pit in the front walk and sit next to it, handing out candy to the kids. More than a few kids and parents have lingered at our house beyond the time to put candy in bags for the warmth from the fire. During COVID, it was better to be out in the open air, and it's fun, and it also includes the added benefit that our dog Missy can nap in the kennel instead of freaking out at every person to knock or set foot on our porch. Hope you're having a good show tonight, and happy Halloween. Thanks, Paul. That's perfect, Paul. Oh, that Thank was so great. But it's like he knew the topics and everything. So That's he's, fantastic. He's from Duluth. <laughs> he's from Duluth. He's from Minnesota. I, I got to say... I grew up in Winnipeg, just to the northwest, so I, I fully feel you uh, on the, the, the cold weather Halloween. And, you know, we talked about it before. You, you got to make it big enough to put your snowsuit on underneath it. So I, I, to- I totally feel it. I love cold weather Halloween. So what the other tip for cold ha- weather Halloween, if you are doing a superhero, is incorporate thermal underwear. Yes. Oh, yes. Especially these days. Uh, now, not for kids, but for adults, uh, Columbia sells those Omni Heat uh, base layers. It's got the uh, the silver on the inside. Oh, it's nice. It's we nice. we are we are not sponsored by Columbia. We are not. But my God, <laughs> would I love to be. Man, if I was sponsored by Columbia, that would make the, life so much easier. The <laughs> amount of of Columbia executives' kids that I have put through college. <laughs> but um, no, that please sponsor perfect. me. So thank you so much for that little feedback, Paul. And uh, Paul just relaunched his podcast one. Idget's thoughts, uh, and it's actually now part of Nimla Studios because um, his former home was having some issues, and um, so he, this is just his solo project. So he is now uh, hosting, uh, rather he's using Nimlas.org to put out the episodes. He's actually putting the episodes on archive.org so if he ever decides to move to another site there he doesn't have to move his files or anything everything's great and i don't have to worry about the bandwidth it is fantastic and all the best to paul in that new endeavor and uh while we're doing this i also want to make sure that people are listening to the bathtub mermaid podcast because melissa has been putting out 13 Halloween themed stories and they've been delightful and you can hear some of the voices here reading some of those stories and Joe you've got a couple of channels why don't you tell us which (laughs) channel they can go to especially for the Halloween stuff but for anything else that you've been doing lately well if you want to hear me talk about movies you go over to on YouTube you look up crazy Joe's concession stand named by the way by our friend Mr. Craig Stepp he was the one that gave me that title but that's the YouTube channel where I review movies, talk about movies. You can go on there. Uh, if we want to be topical, uh, this weekend, Five Nights at Freddy's opened at the box office. You can hear my review and hear about the worst theatrical experience of 47 <laughs> years that I've ever <laughs> endured. Wow. Uh, wow. That's not a critique on the movie. That's a critique on the audience. Uh, but anyway, uh, and then uh, my main channel, the one that I, um, I, I really, um, enjoy doing is the Crazy Joe Adventures YouTube channel, uh, mm. where I go out and actually leave the house and do things. 
So they're both on YouTube and Crazy Joe's Concession Stand is also occasionally a podcast. Uh, it's yeah, usually a podcast. Did one, yeah. Yeah. Well I, well, I mean, I have a PR firm that likes to do giveaways and they like them given away on a podcast. So what I do is I do a video, I put it up on YouTube and then I extract the audio and put it down the podcast feed. So it's kind of, it's both. <laughs> there you go. And um, Jason, you can mostly hear on the Nutty Bites podcast, right? <laughs> Yes, uh, but also <laughs> no. Uh, you also can find me on uh, Nostalgia Pilots, oh, uh, where right. me and a group of my buds get together and we uh, go back and get to review shows about mechanical robots and young beautiful boys that pilot them. And how's how's the how far along into that are you? Oh, we did. Let's see. We did G Gun. We did. Uh, I'm sorry, Gundam Wing first, and then we took a break and went to I want to say AFMS Team, which is like their vietnam war like analogy mech show Mm -hmm. and uh now we are on the super saiyan uh dragon ball z version of gundam which is g gundam where robots get to have superpowers and kamehameha waves um you're not gonna do i i any plans to do clockwork mecha and do escaflone um, I don't know if I, 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 my vote, if we go outside of the Gundam franchise yeah. has been, it will forever be, uh, Gurren Lagan because I just need my drill to pierce the heavens. Uh, but I feel like if we did step out, Escaflone is up there because, uh, it has a very beautiful boy with angel wings in it. <laughs> yeah. And on that note, um, I want to <laughs> thank everyone for joining us today. And hopefully you are having a fantastic Halloween, however you choose to celebrate, even if you have to stay away from your own children because they're scared of everything. <laughs> <laughs> and one day she will grow out of it. Um, she, and she might listen to this episode. Sorry, Kira. <laughs> Sorry, Kira. But, um, she is your daughter. So one day she will grow out of it and, and find the joy. I mean, I, I like, like not even the Halloween at Sesame place. Like, do, don't they normally do a really cool thing? We just recently got her to the point where she will pose with the characters at Sesame place. Uh, she was afraid of them too. How poor kid. You be afraid poor kid. She was afraid of Bert and Ernie and cookie monster. She was afraid of all of them. Oh, Aww. By the way, though, uh, just so you guys know that Miyazaki came out of retirement and uh, his movie is coming out uh, in November. The, the Blue Heron? Actually. In November, yeah. yeah, yeah. From yeah. what I've heard, uh, initial responses over that it's excellent. So we if you get to go. We will be seeing that yeah. in theaters for sure. Um, but let us know what are some of your favorite Halloween memories and share any costumes on uh, just tag me in social media, put it in the Facebook group, put it in the Discord. I live vicariously through other people's costumes. And even though I will be teaching, uh, you know, eight, nine year olds how to, um, fight with a, uh, a lightsaber, (laughs) um, I want to come home and see your costume. So please share away. Um, thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Bye. Before we go, I want to thank all of the patrons who help support this podcast, help pay for the server fees, and make sure that we put out episodes month after month. So thank you so much for all of your support and letting us know that you are listening. Uh, Thank you to our top tier, Big Daddy tier. Thank you to the biggest of daddies. Thank you to Jax. And also thank you to Jason and Rich the TT. Next, we want to thank our patrons of the arts, Mark Cabot, Mark the Encaffeinated One, Melissa the Bathtub Mermaid, and Susanna. And we also want to thank our other patrons who um, have been here the whole time and are really the lifeblood of this campaign. So thank you to Shane, Selginor, Andy, Cliff, Greg, Harold, Hugh, Ian, Justine, Ken, Kinsey, Mike, PCAT, Radical Geek, Stephen, Will, and Zachman. Thanks so much, everybody. Really appreciate your support.
Nutty Bites is produced by Nimlas Studios under a Creative Commons Attribution No Commercial Non-Derivatives 3.0 International License. That means you can't change it without my permission. You can share it and send it to your friends. Just link back to me, my site, and everything. We live at nimlas.org, which has links to everything social media, including facebook.com slash group slash Nutty Bites and patreon.com slash nukejoss or call 347 Nutty 42. Well, it's a shame we were stuck to the time limit. I had so many more questions to ask. I know. Well, but we've already gone for like an hour and a half. I know. There's always next year.